Howdy guys, I'm Cal Kellogg. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here to help you catch more and bigger fish. That's our goal here on the channel. Um, what a spring it's been. We just finished out our spring trout guiding season. Um, very exciting, very tiring fishing every single day. Next week, Lucy and I, we're gonna start hitting the high country out of our kayak. Um, we're gonna bring you along on all those adventures. But right now, I kind of want to put some closure to the spring season by answering an often asked question. What baits have been working best for me? I've got a couple baits that were head and shoulders above the, the rest. Those may surprise you. I've got a couple baits that deserve honorable mention. Um, but before I get into all that, check out some of the amazing trout that my clients landed this spring. Some of, got, some of the guys out on the boat, they landed their personal best ever trout and uh, it was very exciting. Well, those were some dandy trout and uh, I'm not gonna lie, no matter how many big trout I net, I wanna net more big trout. They just, they just get me excited, they get me fired up, they get me feeling like a little kid again. Um, having said that, you know, the biggest challenge this spring was the conditions. At times we were dealing with really stained water. We were dealing with above, you know, above normal temperature, big wind. Then we had cold snaps, we had rain, and uh, that just kept us on our heels all spring long. I remember one week, um, we had the water temperature, it got up to 65 degrees. Three days later, after a cold snap, after some big wind, the surface temperature was down to 56 degrees. That is just a brutal temperature swing. Anytime the temperature's dropping, it's gonna mess things up. But that is a huge temperature swing in, you know, in the span of three days. So once again, we spent a lot of time on our heels having, having to figure out what was going on, having to go right back to square one and reestablish a pattern. And uh, you know, we had to keep our clients on the fish, so we had to do it quickly. We had to do it almost every day. Um, you know, we fished Rapala's, Yozuri's, Trigger spoons, trigger spoon juniors, micro trigger spoons, um, soft plastic, flies, threaded crawlers. We pulled just about everything over the past three months, you know, and we caught fish on everything. But again, it was all about establishing a pattern and figuring out what would produce the most consistent results on any given day. All right. Overall, day in, day out for the past three months, for me and my clients, the two most consistent offerings were metalhead trolling flies and three inch FHS soft plastic grubs, just like that one there. Before I go any further, global statement, if you're not pulling flies, if you're not pulling grubs, you're not catching as many fish as you should be. If you wanna kick some ass, go on over to the Fish Hunt Shoot Production store, pick up some of my trolling flies, pick up one of my grub kits. They are a great value. Put your time in, learn how to fish them, and you're never gonna look back because they produce lots of fish 
and they produce big fish. Let's talk about the metalhead this spring. This was my number one big fish bait. It produced trout up to 13 pounds. I don't even know how many trout we caught on metal heads that were over eight pounds. We caught a lot, of, a lot of limits, a lot of numbers too, but this was a great producer of big fish. And I don't think there was an hour this spring when I didn't have at least one rod armed with a metal head in the water. I put it above the, the level the trout were holding at and we consistently hooked up on that fly. Some days I was pulling four of them. You know, all four rods were armed with metal heads. They flat out worked and they're very versatile. I trolled them anywhere from 1.5 to 3.5 miles an hour. I trolled them deep. I trolled them shallow. I trolled them, you know, on mud flats, around structure. They produced every single day my number one big fish offering, the metal head. Um, number two offering was, as I said, a three inch FHS trolling grub. Some days the firecracker, you know, the bait fish pattern like that was working. Other days it was glow white. Other days it was red. Sometimes it was purple. Sometimes it was chartreuse. We would put a lot of scent on them, rig them on a slow death hook, fish them naked, no blades, no, no flashers, no nothing, just the grub spinning through the water. Typical strike on the grub. They would come in, you'd see the rod get wrapped. They'd be grabbing the tail. They'd do that once, twice, maybe three times, but then the rod would load up. And when you'd land that fish, that grub would be way back in their mouth. Very low likelihood of losing those fish. The key was not picking up the rod at the first or second tick you got. The scent combined with the action and the soft feel gave those fish confidence to gulp that in. They thought it was real bait and it showed on the hook position in the fish's mouth. Top fish on grubs like that, 10 pounds. We caught a lot of sixes, a lot of sevens, eights, nines, you name it. It was all about putting that grub above the level that the fish were holding at, whether that meant right under the surface chop or down 20, 30 feet at the end of the season, they flat out fished. Um, they outfished a lot of other things. They outfished Rapala's for us. Between the metalhead trolling fly and the three inch grubs this spring, I landed over a thousand fish for my clients on those two baits. Those results speak for themselves. We're rigging them on eight or 10 pound test fluorocarbon line, getting them in the right position in the water column. Simple as that. Um, key speeds, 1.8 to 2.5, put them in the right zone and it was fish on. Um, baits that deserve honorable mention, the pinhead spoon, pinhead spoon worked well, slim profile and extremely versatile in terms of speed. Um, anywhere from 1.5 all the way to 3.5 miles an hour can run that very compact spoon. We caught fish on it in a variety of different colors. It's large enough to attract the attention of big fish, top fish on that spoon, about six and a half pounds, but it's small enough not to put off those, you know, pan size fryers. A lot of times the pinhead was my numbers bait, but you could also count on it to land the occasional big trout. So honorable mention goes out to the pinhead and a final thought, junior trolling fly. And this had to do with the size of the fly and also how I was presenting it. I've been running junior trolling flies for the last two years, about 200 feet behind the boat and trolling them higher in the water column than the rest of the baits. A lot of times this spring, I was running a quarter ounce trolling sinker right down about a 40, 36 to 40 inch liter to a junior trolling fly, scoping it out there. It was probably two or three feet deep above and behind the rest of the spread. And that presentation produces some very large fish. Largest fish on a junior trolling fly this year, 8.5 pounds. My last big fish on it was a couple weeks ago. That fish was about seven and a half pounds. Came right at the end of the day to fill out our limits. That line doesn't get hit as much as my other lines. We call it the drag line, but that line can be relied on to catch some very large fish. That compact fly, sometimes we substitute a micro trigger spoon, but most often it's a junior trolling fly. We're pegging the action disc about an inch off the nose of that fly using a bobber stop and just trolling it 
you know, in with the rest of our spread at whatever speed we happen to be going. When I started dropping my offerings down in the downrigger because the surface temperature was elevating, I was still running that drag line. What I was doing was I was running three colors of lead core line plus 50 feet of backing. That was putting that fly down about 20, 25 feet, well behind the boat, well behind the rest of the gear, and it continued to produce big fish. So I guess that's the, the second runner up really. Maybe it's the third runner up, I'm not sure. But the junior trolling fly definitely deserves honorable mention. And uh, if you're fishing with a partner, I would encourage you to employ that drag line concept. Get a small offering, preferably a small trolling fly like my junior trolling flies, 175, 200 feet back, get it above and behind the rest of your spread, and you're gonna find that that is one of your very reliable producers of large trout. It works for us, it'll work for you. Enough said, I'll catch you from the high Sierras. I'm out of here for now, I'm Kel Kellogg. You have a great day, and if you're looking for any of the gear we just talked about, fishhuntshoot.com. Thanks a lot, guys.